Our second scripture lesson today could be really, really long, encompassing two chapters, but I have shortened it. I'll be um, reading excerpts of it, but uh, translated and edited from the message translation. You, if you want to try to follow along, you can accept that challenge by turning to page 418 in your Bible. There once was a man who lived in Ramatham. His name was Alkanah. He had two wives. The first was Hannah. The second was Peniah. Peniah had children. Hannah did not. Every year this man went from his hometown up to Shiloh to worship and offer a sacrifice to God. When Elkanah sacrificed, he passed helpings from the sacrificial meal around to his wife Peninnah and to all of her children, but he always gave an especially generous helping to Hannah because he loved her so much and because God had not given her children. But her rival wife taunted her cruelly, rubbing it in and never letting her forget that God had not given her children. This went on year after year. Every time she went to the sanctuary of God, Hannah could expect to be taunted. She was always reduced to tears and had no appetite. Her husband Elkanah said, Oh, Hannah, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? And why are you so upset? Am I not worth more to you than ten sons? So Hannah ate. Then she pulled herself together, slipped away quietly, and entered the sanctuary. Crushed in soul, Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably. Then she made a vow. Oh God, if you'll take a good, hard look at my pain, if you'll quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely, unreservedly to you. I'll set him apart for a life of holy discipline. It so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli the priest was watching her closely. Hannah was praying silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, You're drunk! How long do you plan to keep this up? So rough, woman! Hannah said, Oh no, sir, please! I'm a woman with a broken heart. I haven't been drinking. Not a drop of wine or beer. The only thing I've been pouring is my heart, pouring it out to God. Don't for a minute think that I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. Eli answered her, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel give you what you have asked of him. Think well of me and pray for me, she said, and went her way. Then she ate heartily. Her face radiant. Up before dawn, the family worshipped God and then returned home to Ramah. Elkanah slept with Hannah, his wife, and God began making the necessary arrangements in response to what she had asked. Before the year was out, Hannah had conceived and given birth to a son. She named him Samuel, explaining, I asked God for him. When Elkanah next took his family on their annual trip to Shiloh to worship God, offering sacrifices and keeping his vow, Hannah didn't go. She told her husband, After the child is weaned, I'll bring him myself and present him before God, and that's where he'll stay for good. Elkanah said to his wife, Do what you think is best. Stay home till you have weaned him. Yes, let God complete what he has begun. So she did. She stayed home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Then she took him up to Shiloh, bringing also the makings of a generous sacrificial meal 
a prize bull, flour and wine. The child was so young to be sent off. Mm. They first butchered the bull, then brought the child to Eli. Hannah said, excuse me, sir, would you believe that I'm the very woman who was standing before you at this very spot, praying to God? I prayed for this child, and God gave me what I asked for. And now I have dedicated him to God. He's dedicated to God for life. Then and there, they all worshipped God. Please pray with me. Dear God, we read this story and our hearts are full with thanksgiving for all you have done. Amen. Well, the Thanksgiving season is here again. We sit in this beautiful sanctuary at the beginning of another Thanksgiving week with our plans to gather together with our family and friends from near and far. And I'm sure that you will agree with me that God has been generous and gracious to us. Not only do we have this beautiful church building where we can worship and serve God in, but we are able in this country to freely come here to worship God. And not only are we free to drive here, but we're also free to get into our cars and to head out into the beautiful creation that God has made. We can drive to the desert and to the cities. We can head north to the forests. We can drive all the way to the farthest coasts of this beautiful nation. We can watch the turning of the seasons and count the geese forming up into lines and heading south. We can watch the landscape and the seasons turning again from the green shades of summer, the full palette of fall to the white of winter. We not only have this exquisite creation and a chance at the pursuit of happiness in this country, we have our community, our church family, all of our friends and all of our relatives. We have so many people who touch our lives in so many ways, and each of them is a gift to us. When we stop for a moment to think about it, we find that there are so many ways that God has been generous to us. We have indeed been blessed. In fact, there are too many blessings for us to count. The choir anthem today celebrated the many reasons to thank God. There are more reasons than there are stars in the sky or waves on the shore. And because we have all been so very blessed, it is fitting that at least one Sunday out of the year, that we take the time to turn our hearts and our minds from our self-absorbed pouting and our fretting about all of our problems to purposely turn our hearts to an attitude of gratitude for all that God has done for us. Now in our scripture lesson for today, we have a story of gratitude. The story of Hannah from the book of 1 Samuel. It's a famous story of a woman who initially was brokenhearted and taunted cruelly because she could not have children. But she pours out her heart to God and promises that if God would just give her a son, that she would completely dedicate that child to the work of God. And wondrously, God hears her prayer and grants her the deepest desire of her heart to become a mother. And Hannah did not forget that promise to God. After her son Samuel was weaned probably sometime between ages three and four, Hannah brings her son to the temple to serve Eli the priest, to learn the ways of God. Now this is not just a Sunday visit where she drops him off in the nursery. This is a foster child situation. Hannah leaves her son Samuel there at the temple permanently. Now this is the part of the story that always really amazes me. I remember how hard it was for me to leave Elisa for a few hours at daycare. <laughs> yeah. I remember how hard it was when she went away to preschool and then kindergarten. And I remember how hard I cried when we drove away down McLean Street 
where we left Elisa at her first overnight stay at Camp Greenwood when she was five years old. <laughs> and that was just for two nights. I cannot imagine leaving my four-year-old child and not seeing them again for a year into our next pilgrimage to the temple. But that is exactly what Hannah does. And then in chapter 2 of the book of 1 Samuel, we see the most amazing thing. We don't read about Hannah crying, even though we know she can really cry. We don't see her crying because she misses her son. Instead, we find the prayer that Hannah prayed to God. And it is a prayer of celebration and gratitude. It's a prayer that celebrates how God reverses the fortunes of those who have been low and beaten down. She celebrates a God who breaks the bows of the mighty and how the people who are stumble are given new strength by God. It's a celebration that those women who are barren have now borne seven children. Hannah's prayer was an expression of gratitude to God and a celebration of God's loving faithfulness to her in her world. Now, many of us this week will be gathering around the table with our families and friends. And I know in my family, it is almost certain that there will be people gathered around that table who I most definitely do not see eye to eye with. <laughs> As the country is divided politically, so is our families and our churches and our friends. And it is very easy for old animosities and old arguments and feuds to bubble over and for maybe harsh words to be exchanged and for the Thanksgiving holiday to become completely spoiled by how badly we can all not get along. Now those, remember, those family tensions existed in our scripture lesson today as well. Hannah did not exactly get along with the second wife, Peniah. Peniah's taunting of Hannah was so bad that Hannah would completely lose her appetite could no longer partake of the feast. And even though her husband tried to smooth things over, there was always the comparison, the sense of competition between the two women. But after the birth of her son Samuel, we no longer hear the taunts of Peniah even affect Hannah. Hannah has sort of become immune to it. Her attitude of gratitude to God for God's amazing gift to her, acts kind of like a suit of armor from the put-downs of the second life. <coughs> so, what does all this mean for us who are gathered here today? This Thanksgiving, as you gather with your family and friends, if family disagreements and dis disruptions begin and people start, start to take sides on the issues of our time, when people start to disagree about the things in the news and even perhaps the, perhaps the facts that they believe, as things start to get tricky, you and I can choose, just like Hannah did, to ignore all that stupid human stuff and to simply adopt an attitude of thanksgiving to God. Because, indeed, our God is generous beyond measure. We cannot comprehend the extent of God's great gifts to us. Gifts that go far beyond the things that we see around us in creation and our relationships with our family and friends. The most generous gift of God is that God loved us so much that God became human and lived among us as Jesus of Nazareth. What an absolutely amazing thing. What a completely unbelievable act of generosity. The famous verse, John 3.16, sums it up best. It tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God not only gave us this world, not only gave us our freedom, God gave us Jesus Christ who came as a person, who lived a human life, breathed our air, hugged children, and who loved us even beyond the point of his death. 
My friends, this is the really good news of thanksgiving. Our salvation through Jesus Christ. May our attitude of gratitude always show, especially this week of our Thanksgiving tables. Amen. Mm -hmm.